Hi and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Well, they're finally here. There was a lot of anticipation about these paints, the Dilutions paints. So today I thought I would do the cover of the small journal because it is full. There's no more room for me to add any more pages on there. So I thought it would be fun to do uh, to decorate the top. So I'm going to use the paints. I'm also going to use some stamps and some stencils and I'll make it fun. Okay, so I feel like I need to preface this by saying that the Dilutions paints react differently to paper than on gesso and they are semi-translucent. So because I was doing a book cover and it is brown, I needed to cover it with gesso. So just keep that in mind when you're using the Dilutions paints. They're absolutely awesome on paper. I, I love them. I had the pleasure of swatching them on paper. Um, but on a gessoed surface, you have to probably layer them twice or, or add two layers um, if you want like a very opaque coverage and not so much on paper. So also make sure that when you do your book cover, because it has grooves on the spine, make sure that you add gesso on inside the grooves as well. You have to work around the elastic band, but it's not a big deal. It's doable. The gesso if you don't apply too much of a thick coat, it will dry pretty fast and the Dilutions paints dry fast anyways. Okay, so I have to confess that I've been watching Diane's videos on the Dilutions paints. I think she has two or three. There are two different methods to apply them. One is the uh, baby wipe, which is the method that I prefer, but it works better on paper. I, I still did it on gesso and it worked quite well, but if you go over a certain area and the paint hasn't dried yet, you will remove uh, that paint. That doesn't happen on paper, so something also to consider. I'm going to add bubblegum uh, pink, uh, fresh lime, and uh, the orange is squeezed orange to uh, the cover and I wanted something patchy. I did not want to have something too blendy blendy. <laughs> That's my term. I wanted the colors more opaque so I'm going in with the second method that I saw Diane use to apply those paints and she uses the inking tool with the round uh, sponges. This is the, the round applicator I should have said and I love how I get that gorgeous color uh, by blending the orange and the pink. The one thing that's very important to remember if you want to keep your sponges reusable is to remove the excess paint either by um, scribbling or painting on another surface like another journal or a tag like I'm doing right now. Um, also, you don't really don't need a lot of paint, so I tend to pick up the paint from the jar lid and uh, you need to replace that lid on the jar as soon as you're done uh, using the paint because the paint does dry really fast, so that's another word of caution. But I like the format because it's got a wide opening so you can actually um, put or use it with the sponge directly inside the jar if you wish to do so. I didn't have the white Dilutions paint, although it does exist, so I'm going in with Dana Wakely's paints for stenciling the arrows, but you can totally do that with the Dilutions paints as well. I just didn't have the white one available to me.
Another cool characteristics of the paint that I love is that you can actually spray dilutions sprays right over the dilutions and paint and it will stay there. It will dry very beautifully. It will not slide off as it tends to do sometimes with other acrylic paint. So that's one cool feature as well. I didn't stamp that pair of legs really well. I didn't want it to look as if it was floating. So that's why I'm adding a bit of black with the Pit uh, Big Brush pen by Faber-Castell. And now I'm gonna concentrate on the cover. Now remember that when you're doing the cover, you have to flip the elastic around. So make sure that what is underneath or the back cover is dry. When dry, the dilutions paints are permanent and you'll see me remove some of the black with a baby wipe and the green that's underneath it did not move at all because it was completely dry. Here's another fun thing I picked up by watching Diane's videos. I made dots with the foam applicator and instead of stamping with it, I actually swirled it around so that I created that nice soft edge on each of the circles. And this reminds me of like a bouquet effect. If you're familiar with photography, you'll know what that is. And now I'm just decorating the stamped border with a white paint pen and also the food ball. As you will notice on the photos at the end, I also went around some of the arrows with a white paint pen and that's pretty much it. I've had a lot of fun playing with the Dilutions paints and I hope that you will too. I highly recommend them. I also hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below in the comments section and we'll see you next week.